or all, probably together, are the solution. There is a wilderness time as change happens, as things change. And I had never really stopped to think about the wilderness time of my grandparents and my great-grandparents. And many of you have never lived in a, in a city, so I imagine when cars were first coming around, it didn't really matter whether you had stop signs or whether you had signals. They didn't even have, can you imagine a time when there wasn't even a signal for a left turn or a, a right turn? Can you imagine there was a time when, when none of that existed and it all had to be created because of the circumstances? We're in one of those times. We have partial answers. But in this wilderness time, in this wilderness time, we can look back to what was the wilderness time that Jesus was in? What was the opportunities that we have during this wilderness time, during this Lent in particular? So drawing on the power of our baptism, the Holy Spirit, all that we know with our heads, our hearts, our scriptures, our policies, our care, and our compassion. So that when we come out of the wilderness, we will be, as Jesus was, empowered to do ministry, empowered to be caring to one another, empowered to find solutions of compassion and care. Are you hungry? I'm famished. Well, what's wrong with that? Are you dying? No. Can you stand being hungry for a while longer? Maybe. I guess so. Okay, so what else? Are you lonely? Yes, I am. I'm terribly lonely. But what's wrong with being alone? Will it kill you? I don't like it. That's not what I asked. Can you live with it? Probably not, but I'll try. Our minds are geniuses at telling us that losing our pacifiers in life, whatever that pacifier is that gives you security, food, shelter, power, is going to kill us. That losing that will kill us. But it's almost never true. And all that's going to happen is that we're going to, to suck air for a while. Then we're going to hiccup. Then we're going to look around and see things without the, those pink plastic circles under our noses, which is going to turn out to be a good thing for both us and everyone else in our lives. But it would be a mistake for me to try to describe your wilderness exam. I don't know what it will be like. All I know for sure is that a voluntary trip to the desert, to the wilderness in this Lent is a great way to practice getting free of those temptations for life, not only because it is where you lose your appetite for things that cannot save you. Those things cannot save you. But also because it is where you learn to trust the spirit that led you there to lead you out again. The spirit led you in, the spirit will lead you out. Ready to worship the Lord, your God, and serve no other all the days of your life. Thanks be to God for these 40 days. Amen. Are there any 
good things that you want to share with the community today? I just want to say uh, thank you for this blessed week as mom celebrated mm -hmm. her 90th birthday. A sincere thank you to many of you who sent her a card or stopped in and visited her this week. The family is getting together with her today to celebrate with her one more time, but thank you very much. Generous God. Any other good thing that happened this week? Prayers of concern this week. Well, Marilyn Hawk called me today, um, called me this morning and said that Don was admitted to the hospital yesterday. And so he's at Covenant. He was at Trier. I saw him just last Thursday. He was doing well. I saw Faye also, Cranston, and Robert Kraft. But they're all doing well on Thursday. Um, but Don is in the hospital at Covenant, and Marilyn has asked for prayers, and they ask prayers for, for Marilyn also. Generous God. Any others? Lord, meet us in the silence. God of the great and small, we pretend we have control over our lives, we secure ourselves, while deep down flickers our trust in you, our lives are in your hands, God. We like to think our accomplishments and success are due to our own work, so remind us, God, that our lives are in your hands. It is you, God, who is the giver of life, gifts, and indeed our world, and so we affirm together that our lives are in your hands. We pray that like Noah, we may, find, we may trust you enough to fully put our lives in your hands so that when you call on us, we are ready and willing to answer. Let us respond to your call to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to tend the poor and lame and cry out against the injustice we see in the world. Let us receive the promise, the blessing you promised to Noah and to all people and let it change us. Let us be bearers of the blessing and share it with our neighbors offering hope in a broken and fearful world. And make us ready, God, we offer our prayers to you, God of great and small, of rain and sun and rainbows. We join our voices together and with people of all times and places as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now offer our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings, so that our work, God's work, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to bring compassion to the brokenhearted, 
will be able to be done because of your sacrifices and your gifts. be in our prayer dedication. We thank you, God, for the abundant blessings you have entrusted to us. Enable us to be good stewards of all you have given. Grant us hearts of generosity to give back, to say thank you, to further your work, and to proclaim your reign until it fully comes. Amen. Please remain standing as you're able so that we can sing, Lord who throughout the, back up, <laughs> Lord who throughout these 40 days, um, you'll find the music in the red hymnal number 269, we're going to sing verses 1, 3, and 5.
a couple of things that were not in the bulletin and were not announced, and one of them is that the church council meeting that was scheduled for uh, tomorrow night, the 19th, at 7 o'clock is being moved to Tuesday night at 7 o'clock because at 6.30, the Staff Parish Relations Committee will be meeting with Reverend Jackie Bradford, which is our district superintendent, so that they can create a new uh, congregational profile. The cabinet uses the profile of pastors and the profile of the churches to make a really good match um, for the coming year. So 6.30 is the SPRC tomorrow night and 7 o'clock is church council. So receive this blessing. We have been together in the wilderness, a place of growing and discovering. Now the work begins. Go out in faith, knowing that the same God who sustained Jesus in the wilderness will be with us in all places and in all times. And all the people of God say, 